Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Let me check, okay. Ah, it's 11.30 a.m. my time. Getting started on this a little later than I would have liked, but nonetheless, today is the day. Please bow your head with me and let's pray. Bow your head. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father. Lord, I am grossly incapable of doing what you have called me to do. Lord Jesus, uh, please lead me, guide me, empty me of myself that thou, Lord, may shine forth. That I, Lord, may be a vessel meet for your use. Please, Lord, be with my mouth. Give me the words to say. Speak unto this congregation, Lord. And Lord, those who will invest their time onto this, may you give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. And Lord, may your blessing rest upon the Church of the Living God, your body. And may you bless us in what we are going to be looking at today. Lord, I, I am so in, incapable. Into your hands, Lord, this lies. Thank you, Father. And Lord, to every single one of those whom you have stirred to give, to help your poor servants, may you recompense into their bosom a thousandfold their charity. So dependent upon thou, O Lord. Please lead me and guide me, merciful Father. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. <clears throat> Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. That actually appears twice within the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Uh, what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be diving headfirst into this, and we are going to be examining the scriptures, comparing scripture with scripture, and see if we will not be able to come onto an understanding of what this means. <coughs> now, very quickly, a lot of people, it would seem, who are Christians, like to use, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I liken it in a similar way onto those, for example, have you ever run across a Pentecatholic, care Catholic, who believes in talking in devilish uh, babble, okay? You know, the blah, 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 blah kind of thing. And you, as the Church of the Living God, if you happen to witness that, um, you would be on to them, stop, just shut up, that, stop it, stop. And they will... <laughs> Not all of them, but they will usually be like, be careful. You're in danger of blaspheming the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Can you show me in the scriptures where any one of the apostles, the disciples, those of the church of the living God said that? Why is it that only the Lord Jesus Christ said that? about mention about blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Hmm? Why did none of the uh, apostles of our Lord within the scriptures make mention of it? Because it is not applicable for us today. Okay, the blaspheming of the Holy Ghost is only applicable when Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, is physically present on the earth. 
already did a video explaining that, okay? Hence, it is not applicable for us today, okay? And these Pentecatholic care Catholics will resort to that to defend their twisted interpretations of the scripture, okay? And on that, of course, the tongues in Acts chapter 2 are known languages. And when uh, the one said unto Peter, these men are full of new wine, Peter did not respond. You know, you're a Pope Peter. He did not respond. You have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Bruh. No. Now, this thing, touch not my anointed. Brother Brian Denlinger, um, in one of his videos, be it the um, Carnival Preachers or one of the six videos he did on... Um, independent fundamental Baptist Catholicism videos where he showed a welfare, a well-fed Catholic preacher uh, doing this, going off on this spiel like, um, uh, don't touch the man of God. Well, keep your hands off of him. Leave his youngins alone. Uh, leave his wife alone. If you touch him, you got judgment coming down to your house. <clears throat> yeah. And also the Kara Catholics, Pentecatholics, like to use the touch not my anointed uh, to defend their <laughs> false prophecies. Okay, Benny Hinn, um, Joyce Meyer, these types, they will resort to that as well. But about that too, what they seem to like to do is where it says in the scriptures, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, okay? What they like to do is they like to take, uh, what is that? Um, uh, uh, 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy chapter, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. They like to take that and touch not my anointed and blend them together. And it is a defensive mechanism in those who will say, touch not my, my anointed, okay? It's a defensive mechanism especially with this Catholic preacher guy that Brother Brian documented about, the well-fed one. Um, it was more of a, hey, you know, it's a defensive thing, that kind of, you know, around those lines as well. <clears throat> okay? And also the um, video in wherever that was where Brother Brian documented that, um, that one, that same Catholic preacher said something around the lines of, well, he's wrong. I don't care how wrong he is. Keep your hands off the man of God. Aha. See? Taking rebuke not an elder, touch not mine anointed, or touch not my anointed, and blending them together. <clears throat> okay? So, what is this all about? Okay? This is not going to be a milk video. This is going to be meat. Okay, we're going to be doing a lot of comparing scripture with scripture, and we're going to be going through quite a few scriptures, okay? Now, <laughs> for this video, uh, please get your <laughs> authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. <laughs> Brad, what are you doing? For this video, I am going to be using three sets of scriptures, okay? Now, <clears throat> touch not my anointed, like I said, appears in two places. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and also in Psalm 101, okay? Now, we are going to be going through this in depth, like I said. We're going to be comparing scripture with scripture. And hopefully, Lord willing, we will come to an understanding of what this is all about. Okay? And Brenda, <clears throat> also have extensive notes. Uh, please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be reading today the best you can. Now, like I said, I, for this video, am using three sets of scriptures myself so I can go back and forth, okay? Um, some people have mentioned on to me, by the way, it's like, well, Brad, when you're doing this, why don't you print out the scriptures so you can read them off on one piece of paper? 
I don't like doing that. That there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay? There's nothing wrong with doing that. I personally do not like to do that. I'm old fashioned. I'm going to do the labor and go through the, the uh, scriptures themselves. Okay? Besides, I don't have a printer or a typewriter. And I don't want one either. <laughs> okay? So, but let us begin in this. Okay? Let us begin. Now, you're going to see in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 from verses 7 on to verse 22 and in Psalm 105 verses 1 on to verse 15. Okay? Now, they are very similar in wording and structure and whatnot. But when you compare the two, you are going to see and note some very big differences. Okay? So this is what we are going to address. All right? <clears throat> now I am going to be reading specifically from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 7 on to verse 22. You, yes you, go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures and you turn to Psalm 105, okay? And we're going to see where they are the same, fine. But where there are differences, that is what we are going to address, okay? Okay? Many of you asked for this. Here you go, okay? Let us begin. <clears throat> I am reading, like I said, from 1 Chronicles chapter 16. You follow me along in Psalm 105 from verses 1 on to verse 15, while in 1 Chronicles, if that's what you want to look at, is from verses 7 on to verse 21. Okay? Now, right away, in uh, Psalm 105, verse 1, and in Psalm, in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, beginning at verse 7, you are going to see some very big differences, okay? First Chronicles chapter 16, beginning at verse 7. Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Here we go. Verse 8, and you look at verse 1 in Psalm 105. Give thanks unto the Lord, Right away, you'll see in Psalm 105, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Different, but that difference is kind of insignificant. Okay? But right away, in verse 8, give thanks unto the Lord. And in Psalm 105, verse 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Okay? <clears throat> give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Virtually the same thing in Psalm 105. Verse 9, verse 2 in Psalm 105. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. And also, same within Psalm 105. Now, Verse 11, in comparison with verse 4 in Psalm 105. <clears throat> Seek ye the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Did I skip verse 10? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Beg your pardon. <laughs> verse 10 in Psalm and uh, 1 Chronicles 16. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. And as I said... Verse 3 is the same in Psalm 105. Now, verse 11 in uh, 1 Chronicles 16, uh, verse 4 in Psalm 105. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Well, in Psalm 105, seek his face evermore. Continually in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11, evermore in Psalm 105, verse 4. Hmm. You might be saying that's the same thing. 
Let's look at that, okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. We will be reading verses 14 on to verse 20 in Deuteronomy chapter 17. We are first addressing 1 Chronicles 16 verse 11. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. That's what we're going to focus on at first, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, Set a king over thee. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Whom, very important, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. Okay? Okay, and of course... Tie that into the Son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? King of the Jews, okay? But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Go back on to the world, okay, for our instruction and in righteousness. To the end that he should multiply horses, for as much as the Lord has said unto you, Ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't go back to the world. Okay? Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Now, here in verse 7, who kind of messed that one up? King Solomon. He had... Many wives, and the Lord graciously gave him silver, gold, and riches in abundance. Okay, but right there, neither shall he multiply, ply wives to himself, comma, that his heart turned not away. And look at what happened to King Solomon. Okay, and it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn, the, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. Pride. And that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left. To the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children, in the midst of Israel. Now this is in Deuteronomy, okay? The second giving of the law, okay? Unto that generation that um, the Lord brought out of the children of Israel, Okay? The first generation that came directly out, they sinned. They didn't take the Lord for his word and trust on him to do what he said he would do to go uh, into the promised land, okay? They, the spies brought up an evil report. You read about that in Numbers. And they said, oh, something about our children. Those children of that generation are the ones that uh, Moses are is addressing there, okay? Of the children of Israel, the children of Israel. Who is Israel, by the way? Jacob. Okay? You with me so far? Okay. Now go to 2 Samuel. You're going to see we're going to be a lot in uh, the books of Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 Samuel chapter 21 verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay. Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered. 
It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gabanites. And the king called the Gabanites and said unto them, Now the Gabanites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gabanites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gabanites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gebeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Ea, whom she bare unto Saul, Aroma, Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Brazilia, the Mahalothite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gabanites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days in the beginning of barley harvest. We read this for a very simple purpose, okay? King Saul, as we just read, went to go and slay these people, okay? But because of what king, as head, the king of the Jews had done, as king, leader of the people, the children of Israel, because of what he did, that consequence carried over into the kingdom of David. Point, the king, the head, is the representative of those people, okay? Do you get that? All right? Now, go to 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel chapter 24, proving this again, verses 15 on to verse 17, okay? 2 Samuel chapter 24, verses 15 on to verse 17. And this is uh, when David was moved to number the children of Israel, okay? Say, uh, the Lord allowed Satan to um, move David to number the children of Israel, okay? Verse 15 on to verse 17 in 2 Samuel chapter 24. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. That's a lot of people. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil, changed his direction in context, and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna the Jebusite. Now check this out. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people, and said, Lo, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. Why did we read this? To back up what we just read in chapter 21. The king is responsible for the people who are under him. Okay? 
And David said right there, I was the one that had sinned. What did they do? Okay. See? So David was responsible for the people. Okay. And because he sinned, okay, because he sinned in numbering, the Lord sent a pestilence. Hence, the one who is the head, it goes down to the rest of the body, right? The one who is the head is in control of the body. Hello? Do you get it? Okay. Now, very quickly, so far what we have looked at, pertaining on to what? Kings. First Saul, then King David, right? Of the children of Israel. Let's continue. Now go to 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 22 on to verse 53. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 22 on to verse 53. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepeth, who keepest the covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart, who has kept with thy servant David my father that thou promisest him. Thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Okay? Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father, that thou promisedest him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel. Sit on the throne of Israel so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built it, Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, that thine eyes may be open toward this house, night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel. When they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, 
If there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or there be caterpillar, if their enemy beseech them, besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people, by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Let's read those two verses, verses 39 and 40 again. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Uh, look at, uh, go ahead, look at First Chronicles 16, verse 11. Seek the Lord and his strength, and his strength. Seek his face continually, continually. Hmm. Let's continue. First Kings chapter 8, picking up at verse 41. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, Gentiles, hello, hi, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. Verse 44, If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near, Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive that they may have compassion on them. <clears throat> For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. 
For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Continually. Seeking his face continually. Hmm? Now, 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 9. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time. The Lord appeared to Solomon twice. Okay? As he had appeared unto him at Gibeon, and the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Verse 4, very important. And if, and if, conditional clause, and if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments. Then, then, I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, oh, beg your pardon, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if, Ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight. And Israel shall become a proverb and a byword among all people. Mm. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss. And they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God who brought forth their fathers out to the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. You see the continual seeking his face? Verse 11 in First Chronicles 16, Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. Okay? Now, Go to 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 25 on to verse 33. 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 25 on to verse 33. Then Jeroboam built Shechem and Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Peniel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah. Rehoboam was the son of Solomon who was who ascended onto the throne after the death of Solomon. And this is when the Lord split 
the kingdom. Rehoboam with Judah and Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, a notorious villain, had the rest of the tribes. There was Judah and Benjamin, okay? Judah and Benjamin. And the other tribes were associated under the rule of Jeroboam, okay? Okay? <clears throat> okay, let's reread that. Verse 27. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold, two calves of gold, and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, thy gods. <laughs> uh, Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, who in the first five books of Moses said virtually the same thing? Aaron? when he fashioned uh, with the graving tool or whatever, all the golden earrings and whoop, out came this calf. These be thy gods. Okay, you see, let's continue. And he set the one in Bethel and the other put he in Dan. Very interesting. The idol in Dan, okay. Uh, what was that in the book of Judges that talks about Dan? Right? Okay, let's continue. Verse 30. Very significant. And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. Now, very quickly, this Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Notorious villain. He set up gods, fake little cap gods. And because of that, verse 30, and this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto the even unto Dan. Replacement, anyone? Okay. Because of what Jeroboam did as king of the northern tribe, tribes, excuse me. Because of what he did, he led the people into sin. See, the king responsible for the people who are under him. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 31. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Anybody could have been a priest under the uh, under Jeroboam the son of Nebat, when the Lord, under the law, specifically made um, it a law that the sons of Levi were to do such. Okay, you see, that'll be addressed a little bit more in detail in a later video. Okay, verse thirty-two. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. So he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. Uh, talk about replacement theology, anyone? Right? Oh boy, let's continue. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the, of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. Very similar unto what Catholics do with all their plethora of holidays and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. Again, he was responsible for what the people 
did, okay? Okay? Starts at the head and it goes down into the body. Okay? You, you can get the instruction in righteousness for that yourself, can't you? Okay? But we see this thing of a continuance, continual offering, continual seeking. Okay? Continual. Continual. Go to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Hear ye this word which I take up against you, even in lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. For thus saith the Lord God, The city that went out by a thousand shall leave an hundred. And that which went forth by an hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, which we just kind of read about, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood, Wormwood. And leave off righteousness in the earth. Seek him that maketh the seven stars of Orion, and turneth the shadow of death in the morning into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. That strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. The fortress. <laughs> they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. <laughs> Isn't that true for us today? And they abhor him that speaketh up rightly. Again, instruction and in righteousness. <laughs> Is that not the truth today? <laughs> Let's continue. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe. And they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore the prudent shall keep silent, silence in that time, for it is an evil time. And for our instruction in righteousness, do you, have you ever wondered why you been, might have been in a circumstance or situation where you wanted to speak something, but the Lord was, that dwells within you, if you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, you know, converted, and the Lord lives in you? Okay, uh, you want to speak, but the Lord's like, Shh, shut up, shut up. Does that happen to any of you? Let's continue. Verse 14, seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. So him, the Lord being with, them was predicated on them seeking him. Well, you might be saying to yourself, well, is that not the case today? What's the difference between what we're reading in Amos uh, rather than what is today, the time of the Gentiles? Two different dispensations. This is under the law, which was faith and works. The dispensation that we are in today is by grace 
through faith. Okay? Back then, under the law, the faith was in that God will honor what they have done. While today, we have faith in what he has done. Okay? Let me say that again, because I might have just botched that. Beg your pardon. Under the law, they had, they had, the faith that they were shewing was that God would honor what they were doing. While in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, it is having faith on what the Lord has done. Do you get it? Okay? We're going to get on that a little bit later. Uh, we're going to get into that in a little bit more detail, okay? But remember that, okay? Faith and works under the law, by grace, through faith today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Two different dispensations. you got to rightly divide the word of truth, dear friends. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 15. And this crosses dispensational lines. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Now, we are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Paul said that himself, okay? Okay? We are to hate the evil and love the good. What is good? There is none good but one. That is God. Okay? And what are we to love? The truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay? But their mercy, their grace, so to say, grace was in the uh, dispensation of the law, was predicated on the children of Israel continually seeking the Lord. We're going to get to the difference. Don't get ahead of me. Okay? Let's continue. Therefore, from verse 16, Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, saith thus. Uh, note there how it says in verse 16, Lord, capital word, uh, letters, the God of hosts, the Lord, capital L with lowercase letters, Hmm. Who is God save the Lord? Who is the Lord? The Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the Father? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue. Okay. Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, Wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Oh boy, there's a whole lot of instruction and in righteousness that we can touch on in that one, right? <laughs> Let's continue though. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord, uh, Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days. Get a load of that. And think about how the Catholics have imparted onto so many of you Christians all these holidays. Let's continue. I hate, verse 21, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear thy, the melody of thy vials. But 
Let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Shun, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Hmm. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Okay? Now, a continual seeking, a continual seeking under the law of the children of Israel because eternal security was not in the Old Testament people. Okay? All right. They were offering animal sacrifices to cover their sins. They had to continually do that. Okay, because the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit was not a permanent resident within anyone within the dispensation of the law. It was a continual thing. They had to continually do these sacrifices and offerings. Okay, because the perfect atonement for sin was yet to be made in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, people, okay? And you have these, I beg your pardon, you have these idiots telling you that the, well, the offerings were um, uh, objects of faith. They're lying to you. Trying to prove that it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation, so you take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But under the law, it was a continual seeking because the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. David himself said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Okay? Continually. So when you look at verse 11 and 1 Chronicles chapter 16, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. Okay? You get that? Very important. Now, what about Psalm 105? Verse 4. It says, Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Well, they mean the same thing. What say at the scriptures, buddy? Turn now in your authorized version of the scriptures to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. <laughs> you know, to prepare this, I will lock myself in here and uh, kind of separate myself from my wife for a little while. Uh, praise the Lord <laughs> for what he has shewed. Romans chapter 4, we are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 2. 12. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 12. Psalm 105, verse 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Well, in 1 Chronicles for, uh, chapter 16, verse 11, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually, as continually seeking as under the law. Okay? Romans chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 12. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed what God was going to do. Okay, and that was accounted to him for righteousness. Today, this dispensation, okay, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for us. Will do, will do, has done. Will do, has done. Okay? 
Okay? You get it? Okay? Let's continue. Now to him that worketh is the, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for him, is counted for righteousness. His faith is counted for righteousness. Excuse me. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, who he had being yet uncircumcised. Let's read verses, verse 13 as well. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Okay? Now, go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 17. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, <laughs> beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and, ha and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any, if any other man, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained for to me, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless. And I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but done, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow ooh, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the whole high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is that prize? Kingdom of heaven inheritance? 
and also to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and walk, and mark them which walk so, as ye have us for an ensample. See, today, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? You have God the Father dwelling within you. Okay? Okay? We get that. That means whether you live or whether or die, you are the Lord's. Okay? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? Those of you of the church of the living God, when you die, you're going to go to heaven. Whether you like it or not. Why you wouldn't like that, I don't know. But you're going to heaven. Okay? You cannot lose your salvation because it is not your salvation. It is the gift of God. Okay? You're sealed. You're going to heaven. So seek his face of a more. You have the Lord within you. You are to seek him for guidance. But see, your sins have been bought and paid for and laid on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sins. While the blood of bulls and goats merely covered them. See? Do you see? In First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11, it says continually, meaning continually seeking the Lord under the dispensation of the law, which is faith and works. In Psalm 105, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face evermore, could be likened unto this dispensation where you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? This is for instruction and in righteousness too, by the way. Okay? But that is the difference. Continually, evermore, continually, no eternal security under the law. He could come and go, come and go today. Eternal security, sealed unto the day of redemption. You have the Lord within you. Do you get it? Okay? That's the difference. Continually, as unto the law. Evermore, he dwells within you. Do you see? Okay? Good. Okay. Now, let's continue now in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, and you follow along in Psalm 105, okay? And you, we are going to be reading on to verse 13, and in Psalm 105, it will be verse 6. Now, remember verse 12 in 1 Chronicles 16, which is verse 5 in Psalm 105. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Same within Psalm 105. Now here's the difference. Verse 13. O ye seed of Israel, his servant. Okay? Verse 6 in Psalm 105. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen. O ye seed of Israel, his servant. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Exodus. Now, we're going to be concentrating again on verse 13 in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. O ye seed of Israel, his servant. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Okay? Psalm 105, verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. 
Singular, plural, singular, plural. Oh, what does that mean? Let's find out. Go to Exodus chapter 19. In the first five books of Moses, Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 6. And Exodus chapter 19. Okay? In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up into, and Moses went up unto God, unto God, and the Lord called unto him. Okay, beg your pardon. Let's read that again. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagle w eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deutero, second. Anami, law. Second giving of the law. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verses 1 on to verse 26. In other words, the whole chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 7. <laughs> when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The apple of his eye, the Jew, okay? The Jew is the apple of God's eye. You Catholics and those of you anti-Semitic types, you need to get over that. Let's continue. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, past tense, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, 
hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and of course for our instruction in righteousness from under Satan, from the world. He brought us out of. Okay? Let's continue. Now therefore, that the Lord thy God, no therefore, excuse me, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. You ain't getting away with nothing. You hate the Lord, you ain't getting away with anything. Comprende? Let's continue. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if, Ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. Again, continually. Okay? Continually. Okay? And who is he speaking unto? Israel. The Jews. Let's continue. And he will love thee, and bless thee, and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you, or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Well, you can kind of compare verse 15 about what's going on out there today, right? <laughs> this fic... Never mind, never mind. Not going to get... Not going to go off on too many rabbit trails. <laughs> Let's continue. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. Let's continue. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto Egypt. Oh, beg your pardon. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out. Beg your pardon. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will. The Lord thy God will. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little, Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beast of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. 
For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Abhor means extreme hatred. Now, these promises were unto the children of Israel under the condition that they obeyed. Okay? It was conditional. You do X, Y, Z, I'll keep you in the land. You don't do X, Y, Z, but decide to do A, B, C instead of X, Y, Z. Conditional. Okay? Conditional. Now, granted, when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, come back at his second coming after the purchase of the uh, purchase of the, the redemption of the purchase re uh, possession, beg your pardon for me stumbling over that, <laughs> um, after we get caught up and he come back with us, he's going to establish the kingdom of heaven, which is never going to fall or anything like that, okay? Keeping that in mind. But we see conditional. Unto who? The children of Israel, as we just saw, were his chosen people, right? For this dispensation, okay? The, the Jew is still the apple of God's eye. Remember, we the Jew and the Gentile have been grafted into the tree of the Jew today to make them jealous, okay? Got to remember that. Now, go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 9. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy, of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not to it, not well, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Tomorrow is the fourth. Uh, turn not to the left hand, or not turn not to the left hand nor to the right. Remove thy foot from evil. Okay, the very last verse in Proverbs chapter four. Let's continue. Okay, verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Okay? Very quickly, go to Genesis chapter 35 now. I had a little asterisk. On that, I was supposed to read that first because uh, I forgot to write that in the initial notes of this. But, doesn't hurt. Genesis chapter 35, verses 21 on to verse 26. 
And Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. Israel, who is Israel? Genesis chapter 35. Jacob. Jacob. Okay? Jacob. Israel. Jacob. The time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Israel's trouble. Okay? Let's continue. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with his Bilhah, his father's concubine. Am I reading you the right one? Yes, I am. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun, the son of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan, and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, Gad, and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob, which were born to him in Para and Padan Aram. Okay, 12. And of course, Manasseh and Ephraim were grafted in because Joseph, uh, in the promised land when they went into the kingdom, Joseph was, what was it? Ephraim and Manasseh was maybe, uh, Levi didn't have an inheritance because the Lord was their inheritance. And I believe it was Ephraim was the representative for Joseph. Okay, and of course, Ephraim and Manasseh um, were from a Gentile, in a way. A, a Gentile, remember, the priest of Potiphar, the priest of On, okay, that Pharaoh gave unto Joseph, an Egyptian, a Gentile, okay? Get it? Get it? Okay? Now, where it says here in verse 13... O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. It's being said unto who? The Jews, the nation of Israel. Okay? The nation of Israel. The whole nation. The kingdom. Okay? That kind of thing. Within the promised land. Okay? Now, as far as Verse 6 in Psalm 105. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Romans chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 25. Romans chapter 4. It might have been, Brad, why didn't you continue reading in Romans when we first looked at that? Romans chapter 4 now. Verses 13 on to verse 25, even though we did read verse 13. Romans chapter 4. Verses 13 on to verse 25. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if there, for if, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace. By grace through faith. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Okay? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom... He believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. 
having faith on what he will do, rather than today having faith on what he has done for us on the cross. You get it. And under the law that the Lord, they had faith that their offerings and doing what he had prescribed would, number one, keep them within the land, and number two, pay for the penalties of their sins to cover them. See, that's the difference between the dispensations. Okay? Okay? And you got these devils trying to twist that on you. They know the truth, but they're intentionally deceiving you for ends we have already discussed, okay? Now, let's continue. Okay, let's pick up from verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Right here. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. He, Paul just explained it. The difference between the time of Abraham or the patriarchs and today. Because a, uh, a lot of people like to say the dispensation of the patriarchs uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, is exactly the same as today. <laughs> They're not. Similar. Yes. Same. No. We just saw it. Okay? Verse 22. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Okay? And who is this being said to in Psalm 105? Whereas Saul and uh, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 13, O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen, O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Okay. Okay. Now, go to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Remember, we're addressing verse 6 in Psalm 105. Okay. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Come on, fingers, work with me. Oh, Brad, it'd be better if you had them printed out. I don't, I don't play like that. <laughs> it's not my thing, okay? Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now, remember what we just looked at in Romans chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 25. Remember that, okay? If you want, you're sitting there. Open and keep your uh, keep uh, your place in the scriptures at Romans chapter four, what we just looked at. Okay, if you want to, but otherwise, turn to Genesis chapter fifteen, verses one on to verse seven. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, "Fear not, Abram; I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward." And Abram said, "Lord God." What wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. 
saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed what he was going to do. He believed in what the Lord said he was going to do. While as today, we believe on what he has done and have faith on him. Okay? Because remember, the Lord said, it is finished. We get this, right? Let's continue. Uh, actually, did we read what we were supposed to? Oh, in verse 7. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Okay? And now, of course, now talking about the promised son, Isaac, and Isaac, thy seed shall be called. Okay? Go to Genesis chapter 22, one verse. Verse 8. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Now, I've already in another video showed how all those new Roman Catholic Bibles messed this up. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Will provide himself a lamb. God manifest in the flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ. The body. Spirit, soul, and body. That was fulfilled. God provided himself a lamb. Okay? Okay? Now, go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. <laughs> uh, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 33 on the verse... Five. Uh, <laughs> verses 30 to 33 on to verse 59. Excuse me. John chapter 8, verses 33 on to verse 59. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, Ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works. Of Abraham. 
Now he just said, I know you're Abraham's seed. But right here he says, if you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. This is still under the law. Lord Jesus Christ was offering unto the Jewish people the kingdom of heaven, the 1,000 year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, King of the Jews, the Son of David, sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? Their king, their Messiah was right there. They were the seed of Abraham. But he says here, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now, ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I heard, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be, born, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Think of who they said that to. Think, okay, if you're a Trinitarian, go look in the playlist section to get that figured out for yourself, okay? The Trinity is satanic heresy, okay? But look at this. Think about who they said that to. The Father himself, okay? Just roll that around your head a little bit. Let's continue. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, he would love me. <laughs> For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. And here it is. This also holds true for all these professing Christians. Yeah, good Christian, ain't you? Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? <laughs> uh, and you know, you look at verse 30, in John chapter 8 it says, As he spake these words, many believed on him. Okay, many believed on him. But right here in verse 48, they now are saying to the Lord Jesus Christ, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well thou that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil? Boy, talk about a contrast there, huh? <laughs> Let's continue. Jesus answered, I have not a devil. But I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. <laughs> Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death? Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest, thy, uh, who makest thou thyself? <laughs> oh, you know, wrap your head around what these guys are actually saying unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? They believed on him, and then they call him a devil. And it's like, who are you? Who do you think you are? <laughs> oy vey, oy vey. 
Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Oh boy, what does that mean? The Lord Jesus Christ just took the title of I am, making himself proving that he is the Father. Not one of three divine persons. But one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. See, the Lord Jesus Christ just referred to himself as the Father. And these Jews who, in verse 53, said, Whom makest thou thyself? Before Abraham was, I am. They knew right away who he said he was. Prove it to you. Okay. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Okay? Now, go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience, my conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called of promise. Isaac was the promised son to Abraham. Do you get it? Yes, okay, good. Let's continue. <clears throat> and uh, also, too, very quickly, verse 7 here in Romans chapter 9 is a very good verse to use when speaking on to the sons of Ishmael, the Muslims, okay? Okay. Let's continue. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Okay? Now, Calvinists will take that election thing right there and say that, well, see, it proves our uh, devilish doctrine of predestination. No, 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 no. Not going to rabbit trail on that, but no, no, no. One day I am going to do a whole video dedicated to debunking the myth of Calvinism. One day, we'll see. Let's continue. 
it was, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have not liked. Uh, excuse me, no, it says, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Great scriptural definition of grace. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that sheweth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. God used Pharaoh as an example. He, 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 just, he just told you right there, okay? Pharaoh's heart was hardened. God hardened his heart, kept it hardened, okay? Because he said, who is the Lord? I know, I know not the Lord, okay? His heart was hardened to begin with. The Lord just kept, kept it that way. To prove a point, what we just read, see, okay? That's another angle that the Calvinists will bank on, just so you know. Beware of that. Okay, let's continue. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. But thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory? Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith in Hosea, in Hosea, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, had not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? Okay? Now. Now. Okay? Psalm 105, verse 6. O ye, see, o ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Okay? And as we see over here in verse 13 and 1 Chronicles, verse, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 13, O ye seed of Israel, his servant, his children of Jacob, his chosen ones, pertaining unto the nation, pertaining unto a man, Abraham, and unto his seed. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen Okay? Note the singular. While in verse 13, his chosen ones. 
Romans chapter 10, verses 1 up to verse 13. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they be ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone, to everyone that believeth, Jew or Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. There are those out there who say that uh, Romans chapter 10 is written for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, very, very quickly, that has been debunked a plethora of times. You have no excuse for believing such nonsense only if you are not saved. A babe? Novice? Okay, that should go without saying. If you claim to be one of these Christians for years and years and years and years, and you're saying that Romans chapter 10 is for the Jews, Specifically for the time we chip trouble. You ain't saved. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you heard me right. Let's continue. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. You know, maybe like uh, continually seeking, continually doing them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above, as if you were doing it yourself. Or who hath descended into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever, whosoever, this is the time of the Gentiles, our current dispensation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever, Believeth on him for what he has done shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have, if you are one of these wicked, easy believism devil heretics, well, this is for the Jews. You're wicked. Vile, disgusting, and you lost. We, what do you see? Those guys, they know the truth, and they're going out of their way to twist and pervert the truth. Their damnation is just. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Psalm 105, verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. 
salvation is of the Jews and of the seed of the seed Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3 Uh, this is for this dispensation. Paul was the apostle unto the who? The Gentiles. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, of course. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? That ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set, set forth, crucified among you. This only what I learn of you. <laughs> Received ye the Spirit, capital S, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness? Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Let's keep reading. And then they which be, uh, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Let's read that again. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Ha ha ha! Right? <laughs> Let's continue. But that no man is justified by the law in his sight, in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the capitalist spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Pay attention. Pay attention. Okay. He saith not, and to his seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. O ye seed of Abraham, singular, his servant, O ye children, plural, of Jacob, his chosen. Also, his chosen, singular, the apple of his eye. We have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Yes, this is the time of the Gentiles. But the Jew is the apple of God's eye. Jesus Christ, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh, came of the Jews, his own. Okay. Get it? Yes, you do. Let's continue. 
And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained of angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is three divine persons. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that, were you? <laughs> but God is one spirit, soul, and body. Uh, I, I, I beg your pardon for that, uh, brethren. I, uh, no, I'm not. I gotta kick that Trinity every chance you get. Okay, let's continue. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Oh, beg your pardon. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. A Greek is Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor free female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. As pertaining to our salvation, our eternity, there is no distinction today. There's coming one. Yeah. But today, we just read it. As pertaining on to our salvation. Culturally, but that's a totally different story. Okay? Let's continue. And if ye be Christ's, <laughs> and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? We get this? Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Now, let us continue. We're going to be now in 1 Chronicles 16. We will be reading on to verse 15. Okay? He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. And then you read, uh, what was that? Uh, verse 7 in Psalm 105, He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Okay, now we are looking at verse 15. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. And over here in verse 8 in Psalm 105, He hath remembered his covenant. Forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, he hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Okay. Go to Psalm 25. Psalm 25. My hands are sweaty. Psalm 25. You know, y'all asked for this. Many of you asked for this. This is the steps we have to take to get to that point. Ain't going to cut no corners with this. Psalm 25. 
Psalm 25. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Shew me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. For what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will shew them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel. O oh God, out of all his trouble. Okay? And verse 15 in First Chronicles 16, Be ye mindful of his covenant. Be ye, ye is plural, be ye mindful always of his covenant. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Okay? Now, go to Psalm 89. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord. Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in, heaven, in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea. Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces, as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong as thy hand, and high as thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Get a load of that. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. 
For thou art the glory of their strength. For thou art the glory of their strength. And in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Then thou spakest in vision to thy Holy One, and saidest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Now get a load of this. Okay? Get a load of this. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. Aha! The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness, faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Uh, put two and two together. It's four. Who is, who is being referenced here? Huh? King David. Amen. And who is the son of David? I'll give you 50 guesses and the first 49 don't count. You can figure that one out on yourself. Okay? Let's go. He shall cry unto me, uh, verse 26. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for my mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed, singular, also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. <laughs> Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the kingdom of heaven. We know that, right? Let's continue, okay? Verse 30, very important. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes, okay? Verse 15 in First Chronicles 16. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Ain't that something, huh? Let's continue. In uh, Psalm 89, verse 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed, singular, shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun, S-U-N, before me. I shall be established, it shall, excuse me, it shall be established forever as the moon, and as, and as a faithful witness in heaven, Shelah. But thou hast cast off and abhorred. Thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Wroth with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Let's keep reading. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Why has the Lord done this unto his people Israel where he's giving reference unto their coming Messiah? Okay, why did they do this? Why? Because they forsook the covenant. They weren't. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. 
See, in 1 Chronicles 16, it's being addressed unto the nation of Israel, while in Psalm 105, it's being addressed unto a man. See? Do you get it? Let's continue, okay? Thou hast made his glory to cease and, and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame, Shelah. How long, Lord, wilt thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave, Selah? Lord, where are thy former loving kindnesses which thou swearest unto David in thy truth? Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people, wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen. And amen. Okay? See, the children of Israel had to be mindful of the covenant. They had to continually do the works of the law. Okay? Okay, so that's what that means. Be ye reminding the people of Israel to be mindful of the covenant. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. See? Okay? And now, verse 8 in Psalm 105. This is good. This is good. First, let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Some of you know exactly where we're going, don't you? Okay? He hath remembered, Isaiah chapter 9, where it says, uh, wait, 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 what verse is that? Verse 8. He, uh, he hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. He hath remembered. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 7. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. They joy before thee, according to the joy and harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the days of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with, con is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel for fire, Oh, yeah. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay? Now, now, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4.
Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Vain believers. A good name to call these easy believism heretics. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Now, the book of Hebrews, let's see my time. The book of Hebrews is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, when they finally realized that the Lord Jesus Christ, which these authorized versions, this, uh, these authorized version of the scriptures, believers, okay, Church of the Living God, was telling them of their Messiah, once they finally figure it out that we were telling them the truth, the Church of the Living God, the Body of Christ. Okay, I'm going to come to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8. Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. <coughs> for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I, will, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Israel, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, to who their, I will be Excuse me, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Okay? Now, now, chapter 9. Okay, I, I beg your pardon, brethren. Got to take a quick, got to take a quick. Sorry about that, brethren. I did have to get up and stretch my legs a bit. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the shewbread, which is called the sanctuary. 
and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. <clears throat> now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as yet, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. <coughs> Excuse me. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of the Protestant Reformation. <laughs> no, <laughs> weren't expecting that, were you? Imposed on them until the time of Reformation. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us with his sacrifice, his blood shed on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, eternal redemption, seal unto the day of redemption under the law. That was not there. Okay? Let's continue. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, capital S, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called, and you are called uh, when you are of the church of the living God, okay, okay, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. But you also have to remember unto whom this is written to. This is written unto the Jewish people for the time of Jacob's trouble. The Jew is the apple of his eye. Remember? Let's continue. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. <laughs> For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. <laughs> Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. It was therefore necessary 
that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, better sacrifices than these, than the blood of bulls of goats, as compared to the blood of God the Father. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of, his, of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Think about verse 24 there for a second, okay? Think about that. The figures of the true, the son of perdition, you know, the son of perdition, he is going to establish his kingdom after the redemption of the purchased possession. After we, the church of the living God, are caught up. Okay? And the pattern of Satan for his kingdom is the Roman Catholic Church. Keep that in mind. Why do you think the Lord is going through this like this within this specific chapter in the book of Hebrews. Huh? Let's continue. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was, Catholics, once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin on to salvation. Okay? O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. First Chronicles chapter 16, while well, similar to Psalm 105, with differences that we are looking at. One is said pertaining on to the nation Psalm 105 is pertaining on to the man, unto individual. First Chronicles 16, the nation. Psalm 105, the individual. Do you see that? Do you see that? Okay? Got to watch my time here. <clears throat> so, now, that was verse 8 and verse 15. Now, Let's read verse 16 and verse 9, okay? Verse 16 in 1 Chronicles 16. Even the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac. And verse 9, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, okay? A little different, a little different, okay? But Genesis chapter 12. Now, what we are going to be looking at now is coincides with both, okay? Coincides both with verse 16 and 1 Chronicles 16 and verse 9 and Psalm 105, okay? Genesis chapter 12. What is this oath? Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. Excuse me. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Abram, beg your pardon. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. 
Okay, this uh, plays into verse 6 here in uh, Psalm 105 and also verse 13 in 1 Chronicles 16. Okay, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed, which we already kind of looked at, okay? So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed, singular, we already looked at this, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hay on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that thou shalt say, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, Thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass, now pay attention to this, because this is going to come into play later, okay? Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm, okay? We'll expound on more on that in part two of this. Of course, this is going to be two parts at least. What do you expect? Okay, let's continue. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. Yes, Sarai was a gorgeous woman. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxes, oxen and asses and men servants and maidservants and she asses and camels. Check this out. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Really, let's continue. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me, taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. Get out of here. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Now see, this was before the law. But the law is written in man's hearts. Okay? The law was not given yet. But yet Pharaoh had sense enough to realize, oh, this is a man's wife. Where would he have gotten that before the law? Before the law was written? Because the law of God is written in men's hearts. Whether you like to accept that or not. Okay? Okay? Now, Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 on to verse 18. 
And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, their substance was too much to dwell together, Abram and Lot. So Abram said unto Lot, Abram said unto Lot, hey, let's split up. Okay, if you go that way, I'll go this way. If I go this way, you go that way. Okay? Okay? Abram said that. Okay? Let's continue. Let's reread. Excuse me. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look for, from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy singular seed after thee. Oh, and, excuse me, and to thy seed, singular, forever. Singular, thy seed, singular, forever. Ooh, prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, anyone? I hope you have been following along thus far of what we have already looked at, dear friend. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Okay, now that's shifting on to the children of Israel. They were to be, let's keep reading. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. <clears throat> See, that's the significance of First Chronicles, the first 15 chapters. The Lord had said that your seed would be innumerable, but yet the genealogy from, um, from Adam unto whomever in First Chronicles chapter 15, uh, First Chronicles verses 1, on to verse 15, and this is in First Chronicles uh, chapter 16 too that we're looking at, as, as well as Psalm 105, okay? Okay? The genealogy was listed there. That's the significance of uh, First Chronicles 1 through 15, okay? It's all written there for us. Ones that are to be noted, okay? Now... Now, Genesis chapter 17. I got to really mind my time here. I really got to mind my time here, okay? Because, um, because, okay? Genesis chapter uh, 17. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, for thy name shall be called Abraham. A changed life. Oh, gee, go figure that out. <clears throat> For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed, singular, after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Doesn't say anything about the women. And yeah, there is such a thing as female circumcision which is, never mind, grotesque, not given in the scripture, okay? 
And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money, money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man, man child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And that is significant because salvation is of the Jews. Remember? Be cut off from his people. Okay? Let's continue. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be, and I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. <clears throat> and God said, Sarah thy wife shall, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Of promise. Remember? And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. <clears throat> Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. By the way, this is very good to use on witnessing on the Muslims. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall bear unto thee at the set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin, in the selfsame day as God had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was fourteen was thirteen years old, excuse me, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day was Abraham circumcised in Ishmael his son, and all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. Okay? Now <clears throat> Verse 16, in uh, 1 Chronicles 16, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac, okay? And verse 9 in Psalm 105, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. They are worded differently, but they are saying the same thing and pointing to the same thing, okay? And what is this oath unto Isaac? Uh, Genesis chapter 26. I have to really watch my time here. <clears throat> Genesis 26, verses 1 and verse 6. And there was a famine in the land, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. 
and Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Okay? And verse 24 in Genesis chapter 26. <clears throat> verse 24 in Genesis chapter 26. And the Lord appeared unto him, Isaac, the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. That's his oath unto Isaac. Okay? Now, that is going to be it for this video. In this video, we are leaving off at verse 16 in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. And in verse 9 in Psalm 105. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. Going to take a little chill <laughs> and then get back and make Video number two, which is probably going to be as long as this one, okay? So, um, that's going to be it for this video. Love you. See you in the next video. Part two, okay?